In the depths of Siberia lies the far eastern republic of Transamer, a breakaway state led by Admiral Kolchak. Why did he break away, you may ask? Well, he was very mad about the Russians surrendering to the Germans in World War I and wanted to topple the government. He looked at the state of the Russian army in 1918 and thought this was winnable. Kolchak's coup of Kerensky's government failed, so he had to leave the country. Fortunately, this area was revolting against Russia at the time, so he went there and soon found himself leading this nation with support from the Japanese. Surprisingly, this nation isn't very stable. We have a lot of people trying to undermine us, leave us, and kill us. And despite our army looking pretty big, it is not even close to being able to fight an actual war. Our focus tree contains a lot of alternate paths if Kolchak isn't able to steer the ship, but I'm just gonna stick with the main one. My decisions show the popularity of other groups within our borders, and I have to convince the people that I actually know what I'm doing here. I like this decision that allows you to customize your portrait in Kaiser Redux, and you can basically give your leader a whole new look. The first group I need to take care of is the NRA. They are the remaining Bolshevik fighters, and we can't tolerate any communism in this nation. But I didn't even have to do much against them. The Bolsheviks destroyed themselves. They tried to drop in on one of our military bases and were immediately destroyed. Just had to infiltrate a few NRA cells and then... Now the invisible army has disappeared. We wanted to be seen as the true Russian state, so we established an embassy to get other nations to recognize us, starting with Canada, since they also know what it's like to lose their country. While giving a speech, some assassins tried to kill Kolchak with a bomb, but they didn't know about his plot armor, so it failed. We went around the world asking nations to recognize us for the great country we are. We started with the Austrian Empire, and they said, <laughs> You stupid! <laughs> the French were more understanding, at least, and I tried to talk to America, but they had their whole civil war. I thought they'd ignore me, but they still found the time in their day to say, Who are you? Despite our state only existing because of Japanese intervention, when we had the option to tell the Japanese to kick rocks, we could just do it and the Japanese just didn't care. Even though they didn't recognize us, I wanted to help the USA restore order in their country. Since we had a bunch of cavalry generals, I sent cavalry divisions over to help MacArthur out, which I'm sure his forces were really grateful to see. We arrived to help hold Baltimore and... That pretty much it, cause I can't push with these divisions. <laughs> when the front opens up in Virginia, my cavalry are actually able to start making moves, and with a new template, they're leading the charge on offensives for the United States. Our cavalry's presence is so inspiring that it inspires the Black Revolt against the Southern faction. That made it super easy to encircle large chunks of the Southern army, costing them troops they couldn't easily replace. I tried going back north to Pennsylvania to push, and I got one tile, and was immediately thrown back. I started to feel like my volunteers were useless since I couldn't do anything. Bad news for my computer, Middle Africa collapsed, which is even worse in Kaiser Redux with all the extra tags it spawns in. I guess seeing Punish Goering is pretty funny, but now there is a risk of my room ending up like this trying to record the campaign. In May 1939, my cavalry got the furthest north they ever did. Two tiles before being swarmed by factory workers and thrown back again. A good skill in life is knowing when you need to give up, and it was time to leave MacArthur. I needed to get on track to do what was actually important, like removing the pretenders from Russia and establishing Kolchak as the rightful ruler. I had trained up a bunch of Cossack cavalry divisions, and when the signal was given, they went west into the barren wastelands of Siberia. The pretenders couldn't believe that we would do such a thing, so we were able to make a lot of initial gains. I'm thankful Kaiser Redux puts a lot more supply hubs in this region, so fighting here doesn't make you contemplate ending yourself. The cavalry were able to keep up the momentum, and the Russian Republic's forces were having a bad time. Despite these losses, Russia thought it could take on Germany, and I was all about it since it was just gonna make my job easier. They declared the war to immediately lose land. 
Everything was going according to plan for me. My cavalry are able to go fast enough to encircle Russian units in Siberia, and Ukraine joins in on the fun to give Russia even more problems. I guess they had so much they had to deal with on their western front, they completely gave up on fighting me because by winter time, we were just going on a peaceful stroll. The fake republic came to us begging for a peace where they would only give up Siberia to us, and there was only one valid response to this peace deal. Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! <laughs> Once we reached the Euro Mountains, our nation was renewed with the hope that Russia would be led by some competent leadership. Eventually, someone told the Russian leadership that this two-front war wasn't working out, so they peaced out with Germany and Ukraine's factions to just fight me. This did slow me down for a bit when they put their entire army against me, but that just meant I needed more horses to overwhelm them. We still had their deserters come to join our army, and I love how this increases our chance of war. I think we've already crossed that bridge here, guys. Once my horses hit the Russian steppes, they started trampling over Russian divisions. Even the Iranian mountains, the horses were mopping up. The Russians just couldn't handle the horse creek, so once I destroyed most of their army, I strolled into their major cities until they surrendered. Iran took a little bit longer, but they died too. It was finally time to declare a new Russia. Kolchak had waited a long time to celebrate this day, but the job wasn't over yet. First, we had to listen to this epic super event. Now I had to go through this branch to clean up this country, but while that was happening, I just couldn't help but notice the American Civil War was still going on and I just, I just couldn't stay neutral. I at least could do some things, I managed to take Delaware, got news that Sternberg had declared himself Genghis Khan II, and wow, you can really play movies on that forehead. There were a lot of old politicians who expected to be executed, but Kolchak was actually pretty merciful and let people go. Germany decided they wanted to go in for another round into Russia, but my cavalry were ready for the ones and ones of divisions they had prepared to attack me. I was making a lot of progress initially, but the Germans eventually realized that when you declare war on somebody, you actually have to send troops to fight them. MacArthur sadly lost DC without my continued support. I tried sending him guns to help, but something was stopping these gun shipments from arriving. With more cavalry and planning bonus, we easily busted into Lithuania and the way into East Prussia was open. Our progress was stopped at Danzig, where I couldn't get past the river because I couldn't feed those troops. So I took a breath to regain org and pull back some troops and heard the unfortunate news that the Pacific States won the Civil War. New York City was still independent somehow, and they were clearly up to something crazy here, but the PSA wasn't going to let this go on. But back to Prussia, I'd finally crossed the river despite the low supplies, and just when I thought I was gonna get some supply, they threw my starving troops right back across the river. So I just waited to build a supply port. Once it was finished, it was time for my Cossacks to stop goofing around and lock in. We were immediately able to bust across the river and start running around behind the German lines. As the German position collapsed in Danzig, so did their influence in Scandinavia with the fall of Finland. All the cavalry were coming together with support from the new Russian Air Force to go towards Berlin. They had lost so much of their army in Prussia, there was little stopping me as I ride into Berlin. From the shame and humiliation of losing to a bunch of horses, the Reichs Pact falls apart and I start taking my rightful share of Europe and especially Northern Central Europe. But what was annoying is that German Crimea is a separate state and because I'm at war with it, it's blocking me from doing a bunch of focuses. I needed to do a naval invasion, but I couldn't get any boats into the Black Sea, no matter what I did, so I had to get creative. Kolchak had to use his special powers to lift ships out of the ocean and put them into the Black Sea. And with the newfound naval supremacy, it was easy for the cavalry to naval invade and storm Crimea. Now, we could do focuses to deal with the states who made the odd decision to break away from Russia. Starting with Belarus, 
who not only did they collapse super fast, but the casualty difference between me and them is so stupid. I've never had a 268 to 1 KD ratio in this game. Poland and Ukraine may have formed their own faction to protect themselves from Germany, but they weren't going to be safe from me. All things considered, I went pretty overkill trying to take out these nations because they just disintegrated in front of me. They thought they could escape Russia, but they just needed to accept they're a part of me. Ukraine probably tried so hard to modernize their army to fight mine, so imagine the pain they're going through seeing their modern army being chased through its country by horses. When the war is finally about to end, we have a solid 12 to 1 KD ratio. Every Russian soldier is guided by God, destroying her nation's enemies, which so happened to be the Ottoman next. We couldn't exactly forgive them for not letting us use their straits earlier, so they had to go. I caught them in the middle of a war with the Entente, where they had already lost a quarter million men, so it was super easy to just roll them over from here. By the time I was done, I'd proudly doubled their casualties, turning the sick man of Europe into a vegetable. It was really funny to look in America and see New York City not only fight against the rest of the country, but also somehow take land. I knew I had to get involved, but there were a few loose ends here, like Armenia rising up and needed to be crushed. Didn't even lose a single man here though. I had to take a quick tour through the Balkans, needed Bessarabia back, so I ride through Romania. Had to kill Serbia too, and the peace deal was really weird. Illyria just took half of Serbia and left the sad remainder in Macedonia. It is really impressive how the AI managed to make the Balkans worse. So, I did the funny thing and helped New York City fight the good fight against the rest of America. I could even send air support to help my calf pop off, and they were getting some disgusting stats in New England, basically taking Connecticut and Rhode Island for them. Imagine the look on those New Englanders' faces under New York occupation because of Russian cavalry. What a timeline to be in. I went for Boston next, but sadly my Cav wasn't yet strong enough to overcome being outnumbered 4 to 1. But that was only a temporary setback. Eventually, I ride towards Vermont and Maine, but a naval invasion around New York City forces me to rethink my progress. I killed the invasion, but did not notice that the Battle of New York City was being lost, so the war ended. My army is so powerful at this point, I just want to do proxy wars to keep it challenging for me, so I send volunteers to Spain, Mongolia, and the French state because I wanted to restore the old, old order. Since I had volunteers across the world, it was hard to manage everything, but I figured Spain would be the easiest to focus on first. The Kingdom of Spain fell super fast, and Syndicalist Spain was just like this. Mongolia was a tough case since the Mongolians couldn't even hold a solid line and their supply network kept collapsing, leaving my calf unable to do anything. Balkan update guys, it's gotten even worse. Does anybody want to live in the Albania Strip? At least it stretches from sea to shining sea. I get involved in Illyria since they're screwing over the Austrians, and I'm able to send a bunch of planes. It's even better in France where I can almost send 1700 planes as volunteers. And since they can all do cast missions, I'm ending the stalemate here because with all that air support, the Cav are busted through any obstacle. Haters will call us outdated, yet here I am encircling and killing an entire army in the mountains. I pushed all the troops in one tile and just needed time for those troops to get org and planning, but the greedy AI stole the satisfaction of killing this pocket from me and left me looking there like an idiot. I was still able to get some dopamine through an offensive towards Bordeaux. We may have lacked supply, but our enemies lacked their lives because our cast was doing so much bombing. Almost all of southern France had been secured, mainly due to me, and because of that, I slacked looking at the other countries I was supposed to be assisting. 
Mongolia was a lost cause, so I had to say goodbye to them. As for Illyria, progress was just really slow due to my limited forces. Compared to France, where I ride easily through the French countryside and cut off more syndicalist troops. I only had 3 divisions and 600 planes, so I was limited to very small maneuvers in Hungary, and I just had to hope eventually the AI would take a hint and attack as well. The wrong AI ended up hearing that message, with the Albanian Strip declaring on Serbia with no army. Not sure what their plan here was, besides maybe Albania asking Serbia to put it out of its misery, but they wouldn't even do that for them. A really annoying thing I noticed is that all of my work my volunteers have been doing has been tanking my war support. The Russian people hear about all the winning our troops are doing abroad and they want me to stop it. Oh, you're encircling syndicalist troops in a major French city? Well, why aren't they encircled three days ago? Get better at this. With the people being tired of war, I needed to go for the kill and push north towards Paris. Orléans was a major city and needed to fall, and this would hopefully give me the supply needed to get ready for the final push to Paris. Sadly it wasn't, and our cav here were on the brink in the outskirts of the city. Having no supplies is a serious problem for troops in Hoi 4, but thanks to this MOBA button, I can just get a free week of no supply problems. Then I could just bust into Paris. The speed of which I won this battle was very funny. So losing their capital in one day was so demoralizing for the French that they gave up. Then I line up in Nice to prepare for the liberation of Italy. At this point, the Russian horseman is seen as a symbol of liberation, and any cries from the Italian people are tears of joy from knowing it's gonna get better. Off screen, Illyria pieced out with Austria, which I understood because they held out a while in the war, but now they joined Austria's faction, which I just don't get. All that fighting, just to end up back where you started, but I guess they were needed to solve the Albania problem. The end was near for syndicalism in Europe. With Italy soon capitulating, all the syndicalists on the mainland are seeing the error of their ways and surrendering to the proper authorities. Europe is looking pretty safe, but still, one stubborn nation remains that needed to meet the Russian horsemen. I could fly 2,500 planes over Britain at this point, but don't worry, I'm not directly involved. They're just volunteers still. These volunteers kept the skies clear as our horses galloped on the shores. There wasn't even much resistance since the British heard they were gonna face the Russian horsemen. The captured Dover pretty much looks like this. Oh! What the hell's going on over here? Loyalist rose up in Wales, and I tried my best to link up with them. Despite us being so good, I couldn't account for the British being so bad, and they died while in shouting range of our troops. But their sacrifice wasn't for nothing. The distraction allowed us to get a solid beachhead, where entente troops were able to guard our flanks as I ride through the English countryside. It shall be remembered that the liberation of both Paris and London was led by Russian cavalry. All that was left to do after this was send the horses north and spread the news of the imminent liberation to major British cities. I was curious what the AI was going to cook with this peace deal, and I've definitely seen worse. The Austrians stole the British Isles from Canada, so the UK isn't coming back. They also took all of Italy, leaving poor Sardinia isolated from the rest of Italy. Again. These are definitely not the ideal European borders, but I'm okay with them. France made a comeback, Germany is destroyed, and Russia is overpowered and united, so I feel like this is a good place to leave things. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wanted to try out Transumer before the Russia rework, and I'm surprised that this turned out to be much easier than I originally thought, but I underestimated the amount of modifier stacking there is in Kaiser Redux. Anyways, special shout out to my alumni on Patreon, funding my Rusufilic ambitions. Consider becoming a member there so I can focus on producing high quality videos for you guys to enjoy. Leave a like so more people can see this video, and subscribe for more good content to come. Hope I'll see you again.